Chief Executive Carrie Lamb says the Northern Metropolis Plan aims to transform the northern part of Hong Kong into a bustling and attractive area, adding the 20-year time frame for the project is realistic. Mrs. Lam made the statement during a radio talk show this morning to highlight details of the new development plan that she unveiled in her 2021 policy address. Within the 300 uh, square kilometers, which is about 27 percent of Hong Kong's land mass, ultimately it will be a metropolis. Uh, we will plan on the basis of it being self-contained. It will have 650,000 jobs as compared to just 110,000 jobs at the moment in the uh, new territory, in the new town areas. Such a big plan, even without the Northern Metropolis strategy, it will take 10 to 15 years. Of course, we want to do it faster, but we all know that uh, uh, there is a process in the development of new areas. So, of course, uh, we will strive to do it as quickly as possible. Uh, the 20 years is a realistic time frame. And one reason that uh, we think we can even do faster is because I have committed to fundamentally review the various statutory and administrative pr procedures that will guide the development of land. Mrs. Lam explained the rationale behind introducing such a massive undertaking as she winds down her term as chief executive. The reason why at this point in time, in the last year of my term as a chief executive, I put this forward because this is the first occasion that the Hong Kong SAR government could do something that is visionary, that is uh, long term, that we have confidence that we will be able to deliver because uh, in the past uh, year or so, two important decisions have been made by the central authorities. One is the Hong Kong national security law. The other is, of course, the improvements to the electoral system, which will return a legislative council, which is uh, broadly representative of the interests of Hong Kong, with patriots administering Hong Kong, and uh, which is willing to engage with the government and get things done. The chief executive emphasized that the success of her policy address, given its title as Building a Bright Future Together, hinges on the support of the business sector. There are plenty of opportunities for the business people. It's not confined to the northern metropolis. It's actually laid out in the eight centers that we have the support of the nation in the 14 five-year plan. Together with this policy address, we have taken a more innovative approach to publish what we call the fact sheets for each of the centers so that all business people know what are the prospects in front of them. She stressed that because the city is now very safe and stable, it is time for Hong Kong to embrace a new paradigm that includes making the government more effective. So governance has to be improved. Um, planning has to be more holistic and bold. And uh, we are also setting a new beginning. I hope in time to come, Hong Kong people will realize this freshness. I have asked my colleagues uh, in charge of infrastructure, highways and uh, landscape to improve Hong Kong's cityscape. So this is really to give people that freshness, that we are entering a new era after two very difficult years. Mrs. Lam also expressed her feelings about the future of Hong Kong as a global aviation hub, adding the government has sought the central government's support. The entire aviation industry is being hard hit by COVID-19. But if you look at uh, the Hong Kong International Airport in terms of the air cargo, we are still doing very well. Uh, last year we did 4.5 million tons, which is I think the world's number one in terms of air cargo. And uh, we are building, apart from the third runway system, uh, more than logistics facilities uh, in the airport island. So because our um, geographical location is, is almost perfect, we can reach half of a population within four or five hours. And we are really the, the, the hub in this part of the world. The chief executive said the policy address has outlined measures to help businesses have more access to the mainland and the Greater Bay Area, especially for business people who do not have the relevant travel permits. 
this question about uh, facilitating uh, access has been to put to me very clearly over the last two years when we discussed the um, Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area. Because uh, in order for this Greater Bay Area to succeed, we have to ensure the uh, free flow of people, talents, capital, data, and, and so on. So I put a, a proposal, it's a very concrete proposal, it's not just an idea, uh, to the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office um, um, earlier this year. It will be a sort of um, a revised form of uh, visa or permit or whatever you call it. Uh, but the ultimate objective is to facilitate this uh, uh, access of non-Chinese Hong Kong nationals uh, into the mainland cities of the GBA for business, for uh, um, uh, exchange or for research and so on. And the response uh, is positive. And that's why uh, they told me that we could have meetings uh, before the end of this year to discuss the details of what form this facilitation should take in order to make access easier for expatriates, uh, which will mean that Hong Kong will be more attractive in recruiting talents from overseas.